Hello everybody and welcome back. It has barely been 24 hours since I've released the, uh, or published, so to speak, the uh, Shadow Creation Kit version 2.0 and I already have an update for it. Uh, this update is pretty major. There is a lot of, um, I wouldn't say there's a lot, but there are a few of the most important uh, additions for the engine and there's a couple of pretty necessary fixes that I did. Um, let's just cover the small stuff right now. Uh, we got the light and master objects. They both have now the destroy uh, game end and room and scripts that properly dispose of the DS list and DS grids uh, and the surfaces uh, which is uh, meant to prevent uh, fatal errors and memory leaks. Like if you uh, constantly, you know, create uh, a DS list with the same name, uh, what happens is it forgets, it doesn't overwrite the old one, it just forgets where the old one was and there is no way for you to basically clear the memory besides restarting your computer. So it's kind of important to delete it before creating a new one uh, and that would usually happen when you go from one room to another. The objects are created again and they create the DS list with the same name and DS grids with the same name so that will basically that would basically contribute to the uh, the memory leak. So that's been dealt with. Uh, also, uh, and that was brought up by a user on Twitter, so thank you very much for pointing that out. It's kind of one of those things that uh, I would usually forget to do until it bites me in the ass and I get a fatal error and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right, I gotta, you know, do that stuff. Uh, another excellent point was brought up is if you're making a, uh, if you're implementing this lighting system into something that is already gone through, um, that uh, a project that's gone through several stages of development, um, some of the key bindings may be conflicting with uh, your game. For example, the escape key is used to exit the editing mode for a light that's been selected. Kind of a major tool. So if you have, you know, usually escape key would be reserved for um, uh, for your game menu so you know if uh, you have like a spaghetti code that just everything depends on everything and disabling the escape key will basically get your entire program uh, tumbling will result in your entire program f uh, crashing then uh, maybe you can go into the tool settings of the ambient kit light and you can edit some of these uh, key bindings to maybe something that has not yet been taken and something that may be more comfortable uh, also the thing that I noted uh, about uh, the snapping tool in the last video this is the variable that you can set um, if you're working on a game that does not use 32 by 32 pixel snapping, uh, if you're working on a blocky, like squarey type of game, uh, you can basically select the size of your sprite or the, the grid that you'd like to snap to. Considering that I'm working with tiles with 32 by 32 pixels, I'm, I'm basically using the 32 by 32 grid. So you can change that over there. Okay, so that's uh, that's basically the small utility stuff. Let's go ahead and jump into the uh, the meat of this update. As you can see, take a note, in the level editor, I have not placed any lights. And this is a pretty major, uh, major thing. Okay, so here we go. We've got, uh, we've got our blank level. If you press the insert key, you can now insert lights dynamically. You don't have to go back into the level editor and pick, you know, your your objects and pick your your lights and place them here. No, you can uh, go ahead and just place them right over here. Uh, everything is um, everything is real time. So once again, I have cut even more time that you have to spend in the editor and waiting for your game to compile. So insert key. Uh, as you can see, I cannot insert the light once I'm uh, selected, uh, once I have selected a light to edit. So that's kind of important, uh, just to prevent some um, some glitches. Uh, so insert key inserts the light, delete key deletes the light, obviously. And uh, the best tool, or the probably the most useful tool out of them all, is the fact that if I select this light and start working on it, Control D is going to duplicate the light. And this will duplicate all the data, all the uh, the colors, the positions, the scale. And uh, what is even better is uh, I can go ahead and go into the shadow mode 
and place, you know, this weird ass shadow right here. Increase the transparency. And if I'm going to duplicate this light, it's going to also copy the shadow position. So if you know, if you're working within the same general area and you don't want to, you know, recreate those lights, obviously this is very useful. Uh, moving on, let me delete these lights. So let's say you have a big light that's sitting right over here in the corner. You kind of like the way this general area looks, but the light is bleeding over into this room. Now, in the first video, I said, okay, we can use, uh, we can go ahead and uh, use the shadows to get rid of the bleed into the other room. So, you know, we're working on this and place the two shadows and uh, use the seventh key to adjust the transparency of the shadow. So now it no longer looks like the shadow is bleeding over into the adjacent room. However, if you go back to the shadow editing mode and start actually working on the shadows, uh, what happens is uh, you now find yourself shit out of luck. Because uh, if you try to adjust the transparency of this shadow, the uh, the issue that you've previously dealt with will now reappear because the shadow transparency is used over there too. This is where, if I'm going to go back to the shadow mode and press backspace to delete the shadows, this is where masks come in. So when you go ahead and select this area, instead of pressing enter to create a shadow, you can press shift enter, left shift enter, to create a mask. A mask completely cuts out all of the light that is uh, uh, basically used in both the light layer and the the uh, ambience layer. So you can go ahead and go uh, and uh, pick your second point, place it right over there, shift enter, and now you have your mask. And that means you are free to go back over here and uh, work on your shadows and have that be independent from all your masks. So uh, masks are generally going to be used for just dealing with light uh, getting into areas that it's not supposed to be in. Uh, that being said, the snapping tool that you get when you work with the light, if you want to, uh, as I said, uh, well, not as I said, um, when you have created your shadow, you can use backspace to clear your shadow and shift backspace to clear your mask. Kind of an important point. Uh, and uh, much like with the shadow system, uh, the snapping, uh, the snapping tool also gives you the access to the uh, to the points previously uh, defined. Uh, in your mask or shadow. So, you know, if I'm going to go ahead and create at least one shadow, let's go ahead and, you know, do the same thing. Point two, let's go to point one over here. Um, so we got our shadow and we've got our mask. Uh, so if you right click on the mouse, you've got the vertical, uh, vertical snap, right click the second time, horizontal snap, third time, both fourth time you have access to the points of your shadow as you can see here your points and you press if you press right click uh, press right click one more time you've got the mask points same exact stuff um, you have access to the points of the mask if you want to have some pixel precision um, in terms of uh, placements of your mask if you for example moved your points away from the um, uh, from the the area where you where you're making your mask. Who? Okay, I'm really <laughs> uh, I'm really out of it. Okay, I think I've covered most of the stuff. Um, finally, the very last point. So let me go ahead and uh, close the editor. Who? I am really out of it today. <laughs> these are these are some weird times. Kind of trying to keep this brief. I don't want to do another hour long video. Okay, so let, let me do this. Uh, let me quickly do a short design of this area. Let's just, you know, be unoriginal and do the exact same thing we did in the first video, except now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this, duplicate that, uh, maybe even duplicate this over here. Let me go ahead and uh, select this, uh, select this light. 
I'm gonna tone it down a bit, you know, get some dynamics going on over here. Let's just tone it like that. I don't want all the lights to be the same. Uh, just something like that. Okay, that looks good. Uh, let me insert another light. Position it here, maybe scale the thing up a bit and tone down the brightness so we can still see the background. We can still see the background, but, you know, this looks way better. Uh, let me go ahead and duplicate the lights, move them over here, do the whole shebang. And, uh, you know, just to be fair, let's go ahead and um, uh, let's actually delete this one. And let's go ahead and create the shadow that we're going to use over here. Uh, or in this case, we can actually just create a mask. We don't even need a shadow uh, over here. So we're going to go ahead and go to shadow creation mode. Um, place, what is it, point 0.1. Point two. Let's do point three, right over here, and press Shift Enter. So that cuts out the entire light. Uh, and that being said, we can go ahead and duplicate this, position it right here. So we have a little bit of the uh, of the light showing up here. So let's go ahead and press um, place point one, point two, and point. Three. Let's actually just position the second point over here, first point over here, shift enter. That's our second mask. They can overlap, by the way. That doesn't really matter considering we're completely taking out everything there is to this light. So let me let me just uh, play around with the brightness of these lights. Let me let me even like bring up some some color in this. Pick a nice cold color. Uh, just for that one, you know, just for shits and giggles bring this thing up uh, and we can just go ahead and bring that thing way down something like that very subtle okay I think this looks good this might even pass for something very interesting huh anyways uh, the final and the best feature of this lighting system is that now you don't have to do this you don't have to select each light and press end and uh, you know this is ray number three uh, and you don't have to save all these lights one by one just like you had to do in the previous system You can now just do this if you take a look at the uh, console down below the compile console uh, You can go ahead and press home And we're done Go ahead and take a look at the console. Uh, this is your one-stop solution To all of your lights in your entire level so you go, uh, you know, if you see this border and this border, everything in between is all that you need to copy. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm going to press compile one more time just to showcase that we don't have any lights in the level. Uh, right as we um, as we compile the game. Also, make sure you copy before you press compile again because that clears the um, the compile window. Go ahead to the creation mode of the master object, paste whatever shenanigans you've copied, and now you can go ahead and compile the uh, the game one more time. Wow, I'm like really out of it. <laughs> uh, wait for the thing to compile. If it would like to actually compile and not just save the game, here I'm sitting here. Uh, here I am sitting here twiddling my thumbs and we have our lights back everything works oh I forgot I forgot to do a mask right here no no worries what we can do we can go ahead and enter to fix all of my mistakes just position the thing this is I actually this is actually where uh, I can't speak well I'm just way too tired um, but this is where the fact that you can just edit these um, you can edit all these lights in real time. So you see, we've just added a mask over here. Let's go ahead and press home again, close the game. Let's uh, copy the entire order of shenanigans we just got over here, paste it back, press compile, and now we should have that mask be in place, that little correction that we did. Useful stuff. And here we go. Our mask has been applied. 
All right, so uh, download the link in the description. Go nuts. Uh, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. I believe I've covered everything. Oh, yes, and uh, I've also expanded the info box. Uh, so there's a couple of additional notes over here. Uh, so, you know, you can just toggle the stuff on and off using the Q key. Is that it? Uh, yes, I think that's it. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.